morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Hopefully, you're all having a good day. Hopefully, you're all are having a great weekend, or, or at least what's left of it. Uh, so, you know, the Yankees are playing against the Rays this afternoon. So uh, they should be playing here in the next hour or so. Hopefully, you're all having a good day. Let's hope the Yankees win. Uh, we'll just wait for a few people to start <clears throat> coming into the chat. Real quick, if you haven't yet, uh, as you come in, please smack that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you are new to this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. And uh, if anybody wants to buy buy me a coffee, uh, I got the QR code on the screen there, and I got the I, I pinned a comment. There is a website, so if you guys want to buy me a coffee to help support the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. As always, no pressure. Let me know how you're all doing. And just so everybody's aware, I will put the link to the open panel. So anybody who wants to come on and talk, uh, absolutely feel free. You know, it's it's open to all of you. So you guys can uh, and gals can come out, come on and uh, give give your take. So uh, let's say what's up to the chat here. Jonathan, good morning. What, how's it going? Nosebleed section, one of my favorite YouTube names. What's going on? Lou, what's up, Lou? How you doing? Demon D, what's cracking, man? What's cracking? How you feeling? How you feeling this morning? But uh, hopefully everybody's doing well. Um, yeah. So there's been some concern, right, from from fans, right? We'll we'll jump right into it. There's been some concern with with the fans as far as um, you know Aaron Judge goes, as far as the bats go. You know they got the, they have the the rubber game against the Rays today, but uh, but let's jump right into it. Let's talk about Aaron Judge. Right. You know, he has not been himself at the plate. Um, He's been he's been he, he's been, you know, swinging at the wrong pitches. He's just not seeing the ball. He's he's late on his swings. You know, we don't know what's going on with him, but, I, you know, people want to say that he's hurt, but I, it's not his injury. All right. You know, he came up. I, you know, he, he can't you know, he. um. Yeah, he hasn't been he hasn't been playing well. He came up, you know, yesterday struck out all four times, and um, I don't think he's hurt. Again, he came up big in that fine uh, in that finale against the Blue Jays. So, you know, he's seen the. I mean, he can swing. He can swing. He's just not. Uh, it's just not uh, working out for him. It's just not working out in his favor. So, uh, but he's going to come around. You, you know, he's going to come around. He's he's in a big slump right now. You know, and he, he said it in yesterday's uh, interview. Um, it, it's, you know, when he was being interviewed in the post game, you know, how, you know, that it's just saying that he's just not seeing seeing the pitches and it's just not working out for him. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Look, I think, again, I think Judge is going to come back. Um, I don't want to hear no BS on y'all dissing my boy. Hey, I'm not, I'm not dissing him. I'm not dissing him, man. You know, he he was he acknowledged that the fans were booing him when he was asked about it. He acknowledged it and he said that he would boo himself too if he was uh uh you know if, if he was in a if, if he was you know seeing himself play, he would he said he would boo as well. So it, it happens. Uh and I think everything is gonna be okay with Judge. And I do think it's mental with him. I think he's in his own mind, right? Just like Glaber Torres. I think I think um, you know, he's 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 just in his own mind. I think he's just trying to overcommit, overpower. I think he just needs to get back to just being patient at the plate and and just getting those hits. You know, um, I know he's a big home run guy, obviously, but he needs to stay a little more focused at the plate. This today, I, I do believe that he will be better. Um, I believe he will hit better. You know, I I'm I'm a uh, I'm confident in that. So you know, we'll see what happens. Joan, how's it going? Hopefully, you're doing well. If anyone follows Grant, he posted a video show it is different from twenty. Yeah. 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 I, I kind of, I kind of noticed that too. Um, I see, I see what you're saying there. There is a little bit of a, a, of a different approach at the plate with his, with his light kick. Um, you know, maybe that's something him and uh, James Rosen may need to work on, but we'll, we'll see. Aaron Rodgers, What's up, Aaron? How you doing, bro? Uh, yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's off to one of his worst starts in his career, but I, uh, he does need to, you know, again, bat better. He needs to, he needs better approaches to the plate. You know, this isn't the first time he's had a bad start in his career. He's had bad starts before. So, um, you know, th th this isn't, this isn't the first time. So, 
you know, again, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how things go. It's still April, by the way. All right. Just so everybody's, everybody knows it's still April. They've played 21 games. All things considered with judges slump with the injuries that are occurring or that have happened. This team is still 14 and seven. Let's keep that in mind with judges struggles with Garrett Cole being out. Um, you know, Nick Birdie just got hurt, right? F. Ross is still out. DJ is still out. Uh, Lou Trevino is still out. This team is still 14 and seven. So let's, let's, you know, let's applaud them for that. All right. They're off to a much better start this year than they were last year. And the big difference with this team right now, yes, Judge is in the slump right now. He's, he's, you know, his batting average has not been great. Uh, you know, a positive we can take away from Judge right now is that he is drawing more walks at the plate, even though the batting average is a little low. So um, even with him struggling, other, there, you know, other players have been stepping up, even though some of the bats have been cold. Uh, they other like Soto is the one guy who's always stepping up, right? He's been consistent since the season began. But, you know, um, it, it it's just when in in previous years when Judge struggles, he the the rest of the team struggles. Okay, when Judge struggles, the rest of the team struggles. They end up losing games. It's a different story this time. There's other players that are that are stepping up. All right, um, you know I know like we'll talk about you know Volpe for example, right? Volpe was off to a hot start. His bat's gotten cold, but you know he was one guy that was that was stepping up. All right. Um, Oswaldo Cabrera is another bat, right? He's been he's been stepping up as of late. He's been getting some hits. Um, you know, he's he's been performing at a at a pretty high level, I would say. Uh he's been stepping up, right? Where, you know, in previous years, you know, Oswaldo Cabrera, unfortunately, he was one of those guys that if when he was playing, it was kind of like a when he comes up to bat, it was like a guaranteed out. You know, it was an easy out. He would he would swing. He would swing and miss a lot, but he's playing a lot better and he's been stepping up, you know. Jose Trevino has been on a roll as of late too. And, um, you know, he's, his batting average has come up, uh, significantly, you know, his batting average at one point was below hundred. Um, and you know, now it's at 242. So, you know, he's been, he's been playing a lot better. Right. And keep in mind, judge is not the only guy that needs to step up. You know, there's other bats that absolutely need to come around as well. You know, uh, I think, you know, Rizzo's bat needs to come around. Uh, hopefully he comes around soon. I mean, Glaber Torres is the obvious name that we keep talking about. He absolutely needs to step up big time, you know, especially with Glaber. You know, he's in his contract year. And whether he plays good or bad, you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see um what happens at the end of the season. I'm still in the belief that he doesn't sign back with the Yankees. Uh, but you know, he'll probably sign with another team, but he has to absolutely impress this year. So if he's trying to get a contract, all right, called Italian pizza. What's going on? How you doing? Uh, again, another one of my favorite YouTube names. Hopefully you're doing well, man. Um, yeah, maybe some people are saying maybe uh, move judge up to the two spot. You know, I don't know if that could be a possibility. I'm just wondering if it's going to improve his bat improve his average at all you know i'm not sure i'm kind of I'm, I'm liking the the soto at two judge at three right now but there could be something that the yankees do consider it could be something that boone does consider doing uh but you know we'll we'll see what happens but um yeah so Yeah, four players in the lineup not giving Soto any help. Which four players are we talking about there? Uh, cold Italian pizza. Let me know in the chat. I think I know which four, but I want to. I want to make sure you're, we're, we're we're talking about we're thinking of the same four. But um, yeah, you know, look again. This team, it's it's a lot different. They're fourteen and seven. You know, judges in a slump, but other players are stepping up, or and they have stepped up, even though if, if the bats are still cold. Um, I, it's just when, when in, in past times, when judge was slumping other team, you know, uh, the, the whole team would slump and they would end up losing games. So, so judge Torres, Rizzo and Wells. Yeah. Uh, you know, look, 
I'm glad you brought up these four names. You know, Judge absolutely needs to step up, which I've been saying um, since the stream started. Torres, I mean, 100%, he absolutely needs to um, step up. You know, I he, you know, he's in a he's in a contract year, right? Whether you know whether he ends the season on a on a high note, um, again, I don't think the Yankees sign him back, right? The Yankees have a lot of players in their farm system, so I don't I don't think the Yankees sign him back. Rizzo absolutely has to improve too. Um, I don't know what's going on with Rizzo, especially defensively. It's been it's been very suspect. Um, with Wells, he needs to get more consistent playing time. Plain and simple. He needs to get more consistent playing time. I think he'll come around. He's hitting the ball hard. Um, it, it's just, like I said, he needs to get more consistent playing time. I know some folks have suggested sending him back down to the minors and getting one of the other catchers to come up, but I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, I don't, I don't, I, you know, Wells could get more consistent playing time at the minors, but he has nothing to prove, you know? Uh, so there is that. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You, you said it, bro. You said it. Uh, yo, 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 Will Star. What's going on? How you doing? Yeah, that, I, I agree, Lou. They're not they're not going to sign Glaber Torres regardless. It doesn't matter if he ends the season on a high note or, a, or on a low note. Uh, the Yankees are not going to they're probably not going to bring him back. And if he wants to play for the Yankees, I mean, uh, the Yankees are, probably, you know, he would have to take a, a, a lower salary, you know, and I know he's not going to want that. Um, you know, some team, I'm sure there's some team out there that will pay him 20 to 25 million. I just don't think it's going to be the Yankees and, you know, uh, Juan Soto is going to be a, a, a top priority, uh, this off season. So, you know, you, you know, Cashman and Hal are, are talking and trying to figure out what, what's going to be, what's, what's going to be the dollar amount to, uh, sign Juan Soto back. And, you know, I know Juan Soto and Glaber Torres, they have a good, they, they have a good chemistry. They got They have a good uh, they have a uh, good friendship, but you know, baseball is also a business and you know, Juan Soto wants to get paid. And he, 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 I'm sure he understands that sometimes, you know, uh, the player that he plays alongside, they, they may not come back and they might, they may not get signed back and it happens, you know, it happens. It, it's a, it's a, you know, sad reality when it comes to sports and contracts. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's still a business and, you got to do what's best for your team. CT Cards, howdy, how you doing? Good morning, welcome. How you doing? But um, this game against the Tampa Bay Rays, right? Uh, let me pull up. I'll pull up the lineup here in just momentarily. Sorry about that. Uh, let me do that real quick. So Luis Hill is take is going to be pitching today. How do you all feel about Luis Hill? Um, you know, I think he's a good, I think he's a good pitcher. He just needs to work on his control, work on his command. Uh, I, I think he'll, I think he'll have a good game. He just needs to be patient on the mound. Um, hopefully it's not like another game where he's having, uh, six or seven walks. Uh, you know, we don't need that. Right. And yeah, no, I understand. He, yeah, he makes a lot of, he's, he makes a lot of fans anxious, I'm sure, you know, but I actually think he will, um, he will do well. But I'm going to pull up the lineup here momentarily. Let me just do this real quick. And we'll go over the lineup one moment. But I let, let's hope let's hope Luis Hill has a has a better has a better outing. You know, his outing against Toronto, uh, his last start wasn't the greatest. But you know, it it is what it is as far as that goes. Uh but in his previous starts, he's he pitched pretty well. He just can't get uh, lose his control, right? He can't lose. He can't be uh, emotional uh, if things don't go right. So um, let let's hope let's hope he'll he'll be okay. What's up, Dev? Uh, command and don't get flushed by back clothes or errors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, unfortunately, like the defensive errors could happen. They may happen, but hopefully, it does not affect them. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. He's still young and that's the thing, you know, he's, he's trying to get back into the groove of things too. You've got to remember he was, he was out for a couple of years. So uh, he should be all right though. I'm, I, I feel, I feel good about him. If you can find his own, he can give you a five innings pitch in my opinion, but that last start. Yeah. That last start was bad. I agree. I agree. Yeah. The starting pitchers, they need to go five or six innings 
to um you know to to make a to to have a good start you know they have to go five or six innings it just makes it easier on the bullpen right Nestor's start yesterday he went seven innings uh, nine strikeouts. That's the kind of start that we need from our starting rotation. Uh, Nestor had an excellent outing yesterday, but again, the bats were cold, and the bats absolutely have to wake up. Uh, today is they 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 have to they they gotta they gotta show up. They gotta show up if they're gonna win the series. They gotta score runs, and if you don't score runs, you're not gonna win the game. It's just the way it goes. Uh, definitely got him, and you could tell. But he's young. Yeah, exactly. He'll get better. I think he'll get better too. Uh, hey, Ken, what's going on, sir? Salute, salute to you. I'm doing well. How, how are you, sir? How are you? Hopefully you're doing well. It's going a whole early with no one. It, yeah, Lou, exactly. That's, that's why in my title for this chat, for this live stream, uh, the bats need to wake up, right? The pitching is fine. I think the pitching is fine. Uh, the bats have been a little bit on the cold side, but it, the bats have shown us this year, though, that they can make comeback. They can make a comeback late in the game. Although it's not ideal, in my opinion, it's not good to do that every single game. You do want to, you know, hit early, get the runs early. Let's, you know, let's get, let, let's get the, you know, get in a groove, right? I want to, that's what I want. Cold Italian pizza. What are we saying here? You just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, too many close games, but you know, here's the thing about close games too. Um, sometimes close games can be good. And the reason being is because Yankees, you know, if they make, if um, I think they'll make the postseason. So let's say they make the postseason. Um, you know the these close games are going to happen in, in the postseason, and those are games that are truly going to matter. And if they're able to pull it off in these regular season games, hopefully they can do the same thing in the in the postseason. That's kind of that's my take on the on on these close games. But you know, I, I'd rather I, I'd rather um, I, I like you know a win is a win by an inch by a mile it doesn't matter you know just just go out there and win but you know i see what you're saying though you know we, we shouldn't have too many close games but sometimes these close games are good because uh it, it it's a it's a good preview of what we may get in the postseason so just something to keep in mind uh probably gonna start. yeah i mean the orioles the orioles uh, wait the Orioles are a good team, so you know. Yeah, my point is stars need to give up, give you five innings pitch, but you're seeing across the league stars are not lasting. And I know, yeah, I mean it's not it's not just with the Yankee stars. It's um, you know starters in general. You know they're they're not going uh, you know long innings like they used to. Right? The only there's only very few pitchers that are that are able to do that in this day and age. Um, you know the 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 bats that are that are playing today. It's it's a, it's a different game now. You know it's a, it's baseball is a much different game. Yeah, I I hear you, man, and I'm I'm with you on that, right? I wanna I also want this. You know the Yankees to just coast. I love those types of games, right? Where the Yankees get you know put up, you know six seven runs in like three or four innings, and you know they 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 win you know seven to one or seven to two or something. I I want those types of games too, but um. You know, it, it's not it's not always the case. I'll 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 take it I'll take it any day of the week, and sometimes they are going to have those games where they just coast, right? But you know, again, the the game is the game is a lot different. Too antsy, especially after two. Yeah, no, that this is what I was saying earlier, Ken. I don't know how much of the stream you caught, but you know, Judge is struggling. Cole is hurt. He's out. DJ is still hurt, right? Efros is still hurt. You know, Nick Birdie just got hurt. Uh, Lou Trevino is still hurt, right? These guys are uh, still hurt. And we haven't even talked about Yorbert Vivas. You know, he's he's uh, hurt as well. Oscar Gonzalez. So the Yankees have a, a plethora of injuries right now. But all things considered, this team is 14-7. and seven. They've only played 21 games. It is a, it's a long season, all right? And we're not even a month into the season yet. Uh, so, you know, given all the problems that the Yankees have right now with all the injuries, with all the players that are missing, they are 14 and seven. Just think about that for a minute. They're off to a better start this year than they were last year. Even with Judge's cold streak, if, even with his slump right now that he's going through, which I, I, I will say I, he is going to bounce back. You know, he he's aware that he's in a slump and 
he knows he knows he needs to uh, break out of that slump. Other players have been stepping up, right? You know, Soto has been consistent, and in and some of these other games that the Yankees have been winning, other players have been stepping up. Whereas in the past, if Judge was in a slump, the whole team would collapse. This year, it's not the case. This year, it's um, it's they're they're off to they're 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 playing better. There's the lose games, so. Yeah, but th this 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 is what I'm saying, CT cards. Um, there's been other players that have been stepping up. Yeah, you can't rely on Soto, Judge, Wells, and Rizzo, but but let's you know the the thing is, it's just well, Wells hasn't been playing well, not really, but I think he needs more consistent playing time, and I'm I, I may get some disagreement on that, and that's fine. Rizzo, honestly, he needs to step up. Uh, you know. This is what I was saying that, you know, in, in, in the in previous years, you only relied on Judge. And if Judge was hot, um, other, you know, other players were going to get hot. Whereas, um, whereas you know, if, if Judge was not hot, the rest of the team would not uh, would, would be cold, too. They wouldn't play well. Right. Judge is on a slump, but other players have been stepping up. Right. So, you know, so Judge, Wells, Rizzo, like these guys. Yeah, they've been they've been in a little bit of a of a slump as of late, but like, but Volpe's been stepping up. Oswaldo Cabrera's been stepping up, right? I know Volpe's been kind of on a cold streak right now, but he's been he's been playing a lot better. He's off to a much better start this season. So as Oswaldo Oswaldo Cabrera, Jose Trevino's been stepping up. John Carlos Stanton, he's kind of hit a cold streak, but his batting average right now is at two thirty four, which is a lot better than being at one twenty five. So there are other players that are that are stepping up and they're that are coming up clutch uh, when it when it matters. I know yesterday's game was, um, you know, uh, yesterday's game was, um, you know, it, it was a it was a rough one. It was a pitcher's duel, right? Uh, Eflin pitched well and so did Cortez. It's unfortunate that the Yankees bats were were cold, but it happens. You know, it it, it does happen. So yeah, Wells needs more consistent playing time. Um, so. You know, I just I just wanted to uh, just kind of give my opinion on that as far as uh, the, the bats go. What's Ken saying here? Judge isn't seeing the ball come out of the pitcher's hand. He isn't seeing the ball rotation. Hence a lot of hot swings. A lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, opposing pitchers, you know, they come in with a game plan against Judge. They they know they know the kind of threat that Judge brings. Right? They know, but you know, hopefully. You know, hopefully he comes around. Hopefully he makes his adjustments. I again, he will come around. He will come around. Just he's in a he's in a bad slump. Remember, um, I you know I hate going back to the past, but you know I'm going to go back to the past. 2004 when when uh, Derek Jeter went what 0 for 31, 0 for 32, right? A lot of fans were pissed off. I mean, he was get he got booed, you know, and he was the captain at that time, and you know he went on a bad streak, but he he turned it around. And I, I still say he will turn it around. Judge will turn it around. Just, you know, give him time. But there are other players that are that are stepping up. Uh, guys, I'm going to take a, a quick pause real quick. Um, please smack that like button. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you are new to this channel. I would greatly appreciate it. I am on the road to 600 subscribers. i um, love to get there as quickly as possible. My ultimate goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers as quickly as possible. So let's, you know, let's, um, I would love, to, you know, love to get there. We'll celebrate uh, with, with all of you. So I appreciate all of you. This is the, I refer to all of you as the Strike Zone crew. And uh, I, I appreciate you guys tuning in almost, uh, every show and commenting. It, 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 Trust me, I it, it, I appreciate it more than you know. So, TC, good morning to you, man. How you doing? Offense is going right back to 2023. Yeah, I mean, what we kind of got a sample of 2023 yesterday. The offense was bad yesterday, TC. I, I agree. We were, we were just talking about that, but uh, they they got to step up today if they're gonna if they're gonna try and win the series. So the bats absolutely need to wake up. So we'll see what happens, but um. Yeah, and I will put the link out to the open panel so anybody who wants to come up and chat, you can. Um, you know, I'll probably invite you all up one at a time. Uh, everybody could give their take. If there's somebody waiting backstage, you know, you give your take. 
that way I could give uh, the next person uh, to come up and give their take. So again, uh, I will put the link into the open panel here in just a few minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll rock out, right? We'll rock out for a little bit, and uh, I'll log I'll end the stream right before the game starts because I know the game is um, going to begin here in the next hour or so. So I got to take a sip of my water here. But uh, also, too, if you want to buy me a coffee, there's a QR code at the at the top right corner. And there's also the link. So if you want to buy me a coffee again, no pressure. I would greatly appreciate it it's just to help support the channel. And let me pull up the lineup real quick for the Yankees game. Yeah, 135 Eastern time. That's right, Ken. Um. Let me do this real quick. Let me see. Let me make sure you guys can see that. There we go. Okay. So the usual lineup, the usual consistent lineup. So um, Anthony Volpe leading off at shortstop. He'll be batting first. Uh, Juan Soto hitting second, playing right field. Uh, Aaron Judge, captain, playing center field, batting third. John Carlos Stanton batting DH at cleanup. Batting fifth, Anthony Rizzo playing first base. Batting sixth, playing second base, Glaber Torres. Uh, batting seventh, playing left field, Alex Verdugo. Uh, batting eighth, playing uh, playing at the dish, Jose Trevino. And then batting ninth, playing third base, uh, Oswaldo Cabrera. And we have Luis Hill pitching. Uh, let me know what you all think. I know it's been the same consistent lineup. Uh you know, there's a few names that absolutely need to step up. So obviously, Judge is the obvious name. He ha he absolutely needs to step up. Uh, Judge needs to step up. Uh, you know, three through five, or no, three through six. Judge, Santon, Rizzo, Torres. These guys need these guys need to play big today. They this is gonna they gotta they gotta help win. All right, these guys need to absolutely step up. Everybody needs to step up. But uh, batters three four five and six have to step up they need a good game the bats need to come alive uh especially if they're trying to win this series uh and then they got oakland coming into town uh right after so you know after oakland they travel to milwaukee after milwaukee they're gonna go travel to baltimore so you know the yankees don't have an easy schedule their schedule hasn't been easy and you know they are also not having any days off for a little bit. So, you know, it's it's going to be – there's going to be some long games. Uh, there are there's some long, you know, days without a day off. Like, it's just going to – you know, they have a they have a challenging schedule, but I, I think this team will do well, right? So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but that's the lineup. Let me know what you all think. How do you think Hill is going to do? Let's, let's, let's talk about that too. Um, is Hill going to have a good game? You know, will he have a better outing than he did um, his his last outing against Toronto? Um, who's going to be the player that's going to step up as far as the bats go? Let me let me know what you all think about that, because uh, there's a few you know there's a few bats that absolutely need to step up. I think I think Judge will I think Judge will come through today. That's going to be my hot take. I think Judge Judge will come through. Um, you know, and I also think that uh, Volpe will have a, a a better game too. So, yeah, he does need to cut down on the walks. That we were talking about that TC. We were talking about how he needs to, uh, you know, control his pitches. All right, and I like to see in the number two spot as myself. Yeah, there's a few folks that are feeling that way. CT cards. Uh, you're not liking judging the three spot. I get it. Uh, Soto would prefer to bat three. Who knows? Maybe they might. They maybe Boone will make that switch one day. We don't know. I mean, he moved Volpe into the, into the leadoff spot. I know some fans weren't really feeling that. They felt that there was it was way too early uh, to move him to that leadoff spot. At some point, Volpe was going to be in the leadoff spot. I but I do think they might have moved him up there a little too early. They should have left him where he was. But you know. Again, not my lineup, not my team, but I'm just just my just giving my opinion on that. Hey, 
You stop it, D-Rod. Get back in your closet. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Hill will rebound from, uh, from last time. The bats are quite. Yeah, I think I think he will. I think he will. I think he's going to bring. I think he's going to do well. He just needs to control his emotions, control his pitches, control his command. Um, you know, I, I I think he'll be fine. And Ken brings up an interesting stat here. He's saying four of the seven games the Yankees have lost have been horrible situational hitting. Definitely. Uh, if you want, I mean, yeah, those guys could help. Or we could bring back any of the three musketeers. We could bring back uh, Joey Gallo, Aaron Hicks, or uh, Josh Donaldson there, TC. I mean, <laughs> we could bring back any of the three musketeers, too, while we're at it, sir. <laughs> D-Rod, what's up? <laughs> but, uh, cool. I'm going to put the link to the open panel. And anybody who wants to come up can come up. I'll invite you all up one at a time, right? Uh, you know, obviously, you know, if you're one of the content creators or you co-host or whatever, you know, you you could come on with me anytime you want. It's it's always an open invitation. Uh, but there is the link to the open panel. So there it is right there, folks. So anybody who wants to jump on, feel free. Like I said, I will invite you all up one at a time, have you give your take. And if I have anybody waiting backstage, um, I will then drop you down and bring the next person up. And it looks like I have one person waiting in the back and I have Jonathan waiting. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Let me know you're ready, man. All right. Let's see. Let me fix this here. Hey. How's it going, man? Good, good. I was at the game yesterday, as I mentioned to you. I think mm -hmm. I did. The one thing I wanted to bring up uh, is, do you remember how much the Yankees wanted Yamamoto? Do you I remember mean, how much? We, a lot of us, a lot of us did. Let's a be lot honest. Of us. Did anybody at that time think of getting Imanaga? I did. Yeah, but nobody in the media did. I don't think nobody mentioned if Yamamoto is not an option. Why not we just pivot hard and get Imanaga? You get still get the Japanese Imanaga has started. The, I just looked at his number. He's three and zero with a point eight four ERA to start the season. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Imanaga's off to a hot start. I I, I like what yeah. I'm seeing from Imanaga. I I, I would have loved for the Yankees to get him. I know a lot of fans were very much opposed to getting a Minaga. I wasn't one of those fans. No, I would have no. I, I, I I loved Imanaga, but I had a feeling that after the the Yankee, I had a feeling the Yankees were too much in their own mind that they were headset dead set in getting Yamamoto. They didn't pivot hard and getting think about anybody such as Imanaga. If the Yankees pivoted hard saying, okay, Yamamoto, you're rejecting $300 million. Let's say Imanaga, call up. You want $100 million for six years? And he signed I mean, for less than that. I think he signed for what? Seven, five years at $70 million, something like that? Yeah, I'd have to look at it. But, I mean, you know, listen, they didn't get Imanaga. I mean, and the Yankees rotation, all things considered, even with Cole's injury, they're still doing fine. I, I mean, I, even I, – even even Nestor Cortez went out there and pitched uh, a great game. The other, I guess, the other question I will bring up that nobody has mentioned has been: Do you think uh, Pereira could get an option in the outfield? He's already on the forty man. Everson Pereira. Over who though? Well, that's that's the big question because Judge isn't hitting, and obviously you're not going to put Judge out, but you need another bat in there. Who else do you have in the lineup and on the roster that you can call up that could help you? I mean, I don't, I don't know that they're going to call Pereira. I mean, they got Grisham on the on the bench, right? They, they, you know, Verdugo, Verdugo's defense is you can't replace his defense. I mean, you can't put Pereira there. It's not that Pereira's a bad outfielder, but 
Verdugo no, no. is a is a better outfielder than Pereira is. Um, I'm just thinking about who else can they, do the Yankees have that could help the offense? Because Judge obviously is too much in his own head, and he might need a couple of days off just to give a mental break. He might ha- he might be uptight about something, and it says he doesn't want to share it because it's a private thing. Who knows? No, I don't, you know, I think Judge will be fine. You know, he's had these types of slumps before. Uh, my my thing with my thing with Judge is this. He's I think right now, I think he's um I think he's in it, I think he's in his own head right now. Yeah. Uh I, I think that's what's feeling, going on. So I have a feeling once we get to the 60 degree weather consistently in May, then you'll see the balls starting to fly out of Yankee Stadium because now you uh, yesterday there were some nice hit balls to the outfield, and none of them were going out. So the the ball isn't traveling very well in Yankee Stadium, as far as I I can see. That I saw. Yeah, I mean uh, that's probably the weather. I don't know what the weather is like yeah. in New York right now. So I mean you know better than I would as far yeah, as how the weather know. is. But yeah. yeah, the weather the weather's not probably not that great around this time of year. But uh. No, look. I think Judge is going to come around. He just needs to. He just needs to find himself. I, yeah. He's today's he's, high is fifty five. Yeah, so fifty five degrees. Yeah, it's still a little chilly in New York, right? I so, think once once the weather gets into the sixties, you, you'll uh, you'll see the ball fly more. You'll you'll expect more. You'll get more what you're expecting to get. Hmm. No, I, yeah, like I said, I think I think Judge is going to be fine. I could see Judge maybe getting a day off during the Oakland series. I mean, yeah. I, again, I'm not saying it'll happen. I can I can potentially see that, and they could put you know Trent Grisham in there for maybe one or two games. But you know the reason you know reason why a lot of these guys are playing right now is because there's there's injuries to this to these guys uh, to a lot of these guys. So these guys are not able to get a break. That's why you know I kept I keep saying that DJ like for example DJ Lemayhu's. Um, <sighs> is missing his defense is missing but hopefully he can play he could start playing on tuesday and he's cleared uh because there's a couple of guys in the infield that absolutely can use a day off like rizzo and well, torres can I, absolutely I, use a day I off so, hold, on, hold, on, hold on hold on so rizzo and torres can absolutely uh use a day off so right now it's just they they got guys that are hurt they could have had guys playing but unfortunately some some of these guys are hurt and you know they're gonna have to you know they're gonna have to play it out so at some point they'll they'll be back, you know. Uh, but right now they're gonna have to roll with what they got. And again, all things considered, this team is fourteen and seven. It's still early in the season. They've only played twenty one games, yeah. so you know let's keep let's also keep that in mind. There's other players stepping up, even if the bats are cold. There's still other players stepping up, even if Judge is um, on a on a cold streak right now. Where, where when Judge is on a cold streak, other the other players were on a cold streak too. It's a di- it's a different mentality this year. So. Yeah. Um, it's it's a lot different. I actually I, I think I agree with I agree with you on one point that DJ's presence in the lineup is significant in, to the overall lineup, and his his absence has I think his absence has affected everybody. Yeah, he, the one this- thing DJ can give you that not many people do is consistent contact hitting. And the Yankees do not have very many consistent contact hitters. Well, as far as contact hitting goes, um, you know they have Torres, or not Torres. Excuse me, uh, Volpe. He's I know Volpe. he's been I know, he's I know his bat's been cold as of late, but he's been he's been uh, that contact hitter. Oswaldo Cabrera's been you know he hasn't been too bad. Trevino's stepped up as of late. Um, you know, there's a few guys in that lineup that are definitely, you know, contact hitters. They've been those contact hitters that we've been wanting and looking for, but you know, with DJ, yeah, that contact hitting is missing. And yes, I understand he's on the other side of 30. The guy can't run. I get it. He's older. I'm not expecting DJ to be like a 300 hitter. Um, I, you know, I, if he could bat like 250 to 260, I'd be, I'd be okay with that. Um, you know, I, but he's, and you know, towards the, in the second half of the season, especially when Sean Casey took over as hitting coach, I mean, he was starting to hit a lot better. You saw the the DJ LeMahieu that we knew, but I, I think his bat is missing. I don't want D. I don't expect DJ to be 
you know, hitting home runs. That's not what he's there no, for. No. I want I want him to get on base and create opportunities. And I, I, I think he could, he could be that guy. I would compare DJ to a Manly type player, player, a high, high average 20 to 30 home runs. That was, that was the Manly type player. Mm -hmm. You don't, he wasn't home run first, low batting average, like, uh, for example, I don't know. Uh, that that was the that was the big miss miss opportunity after the steroid era where everybody thought they needed to hit home runs and nobody cared about batting average. That's that's something that need that is and needs to be turned around. You have to forget that whole steroid era with the high batting average, a high uh, home run, low batting average, low on base percentage. I think baseball needs and will get more exciting with a higher batting average, higher on base percentage, and maybe not as many home runs. Yeah, well, like I said, I, I think, you know, there, there's a lot of players that are hitting for contact these days, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think the, the home run ball is not – you know what it, 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 it people i mean how do, what what am i trying to say P, the 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 hitters are still hitting home runs i mean they're still trying to hit a lot of home runs but uh but these days it, it's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of there is a lot of small ball you know we're seeing yeah. you know we're seeing that in this series right against Tampa right. Bay that that's a team that does really well with small ball right. so can i um, can i just give one example i do not expect Gleyber Torres to be a consistent 30 home run hitter. I would expect him to be maybe in the range of 23 to 28. Gleyber Torres for that one year had 38 home runs with a juiced ball. He's not a 35 plus home run hitter. I, yeah, I don't expect him to be a 30 home run hitter. I expect him to hit maybe 20 to 25 home runs. I'd be okay with that. I have no, I have no problems with that. And if his batting average could come up to about two sixty to two seventy, I'm not going to complain yeah. about that. Torres, that, that's all we need. That's all everyone asks for him. He needs to, he needs to remember how to hit the baseball to all fields, not pull the ball all the time. Well, that's on Torres. That's on Torres. He's he just needs to get out of his own head. He's been, you know, he showed he's shown some flashes. But you know, there, it needs to be more consistent. Um, I I do think that uh, you know he'll. I, I do believe that he will come around. And I and I, I've said this time and time again, one way or another. I Glaber. I think after this year, Glaber is gone unless he takes a cheap deal. The Yankees give him a cheap deal and he takes it. But but we'll see what happens. We'll worry about. I honestly don't see him him right. getting a deal less than a hundred million. Yeah. Well, we'll that we'll worry about that when the off season comes. But um. I do, I do think that, uh, I, I do think that he, he, I do think that he won't be a Yankee, but I will also, uh, I also think that, you know, his bat again, it will come around. It might come around later in the season, but you know, he's, he's been the only other like consistent bat that's never gets hurt. He's playing every day. He's durable. I mean, I'll get, you know, th that's where I give him credit. And, and last year, and I know we're talking, I know last year's last year, but you know, he was the one bat that, that, that came, that came up big this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, it could, it could be the same. It could be the same case. You know, he, he'll, he'll, he'll step up hopefully. Right. It, it's, I think, I think it'll happen. Um, the one thing, the one thing I will add from last year to this year is we did not have Soto last year this mm -hmm. year we have soto so torres regardless what he did last year you cannot he's a very streaky player so it, he doesn't have the history of being consistent over a long-term period so he could be hot he could have in the month of may he could have a 390 batting average hit 10 home runs and uh, be uh, the MVP of the AL and of the month. That's the type of hitter he is. He can have a very hot streak, and he can go ice cold the next month. 
I mean, that's that's baseball. That's 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 players and that's a lot of players. You know, that's I mean, yeah, Glaber. Like I said, he could be he could be hot one minute and uh, cold the next minute. You you know you don't know what you're gonna get with him, but I think I still think that he will come. You know, I think he'll still come around. I think he will. I, I truly believe that. Um, it's just a matter of it's just a matter of when. You know, hopefully sooner rather than later. But um, I would also like to see him better with the with the glove. You and me both, man. I think again. I think with the glove, I think he's just. Uh, I think he's just in his own. You know, he's just in his own head. If if one part of his game is not playing well, then, uh, like if he's if his bat is cold, then you know he get it gets in his head, and then defensively he's not he's not as focused. It's it's unfortunate, but um, when he's on his game, though, he's on his game. But uh, as far as you know, the today's game goes, do you think the Yankees take the series? I think they have a chance if they make the pitcher, if they go back to being the team that make works the count, gets the walks, doesn't don't the, and they don't expand the zone. Don't give the pitcher extra how can I say it? Don't don't make the pitcher not work for his outs. Mm-hmm. If you get an get an at bat for swing at the first pitch, had a weak ground ball to first base, instead of waiting for your pitch, waiting for the right ball to hit, and make the pitcher work. I would like if I, if I could ask the Yankees for anything, I would like the 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 pitcher to have eighty pitches after the fourth inning. I would like I would like the the Yankees to have. To hit the pitcher out of the out of the uh, first inning, and by the fourth inning, have his pitch count so high that the other team has to work the bullpen and get the bullpen started. That's what I want from the Yankees. Yeah, well, the thing the thing with uh, you know, I want to bring up this comment here before I give my take on that. Uh, Ken is saying here, did you know that throughout Tony Tony Gwynn's career, he averaged twenty two strikeouts a season. His single his highest single season strikeout count was 40 Ks. And this was, and Tony Gwynn was an excellent hitter. I, 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 I like Tony, Tony Gwynn a lot, but he brings up, he brings up a good point here. Can I add um, something to that? You, sure. You know, Joe DiMaggio had almost the same amount of strikeouts as he did home runs. Well, you know, so He's, every great, every good or great player, I, think, I mean, they, they have their struggles uh, too. I think he had 380 strikeouts and around 360 plus home runs. In his career, these days mm-hmm. there's, there, there's not many people like Joe DiMaggio ever. Well, I mean, we're talking about different times here, so I mean, we can't. Yeah. It's hard to it's hard to compare that. And what's going on, Brad? Yeah, I I, I agree with you here. Yeah, Glaber is so far in his head that it's not even a joke. Yeah, it's not. You know, um, but as far I wanted to respond to what you were saying about you know putting the pitchers uh in a in a in a vulnerable position um the yankees have actually done a better job this year as far as working the working the pitchers i mean they've been they've been having the opposing pitchers throw more strikes where um as opposed to last year it was it was a it was a simple one two three out but they're having opposing pitchers throw more more pitches they're making more contact they're following following balls off they're battling they're battling and they are getting to the bullpen a lot quicker uh, comparatively. So, you know, they're, 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 the bats are doing what they're supposed to. Again, I, I know as of recent, the bats have been a little cold, but they have shown that they can work the opposing pitchers. They have shown that they can uh, come through in, in clutch moments. So um, I just, I just wanted to, I just wanted to throw that out there and, and folks real quick. Um, if anybody else wants to jump on the open panel, feel free. Um, I got the link there. So if you want to jump on, uh, Go have at it, you know. Love for you to for anybody to jump on and and chat it up. We'll get to a few of the comments here. Uh, Frank Rivera saying the worst thing to happen to Glaber was the year he, he hit all those home runs. That meant, yeah, I, I think I yeah when he had those high home run yeah, uh, years, like it it definitely yeah it kind of got to him and he just kept oh. thinking home run ball. But 
I want him to be a contact hitter. I, I uh, Torres is meant to be a contact hitter. Not that he can't hit home runs, but I like him. I actually agree with I agree with that statement of Frank Barbera because after that season, he changed. I believe he changed the swing to a more uppercut roll. And after that, after they changed the balls from the bat away from the juice ball to the regular ball, he uh, he struck out a lot more. So. He didn't make the adjustments. And that's another thing Gleyber Torres didn't do. He didn't make adjustments on, on the go. Like you need to constantly make adjustments. Yeah, well, like I said, I, I, I think he's not he's not constantly thinking home run ball this time around. I, I think no, no. Just, this year I think he he fixed he's it in a his bit, own head. but he still needs to get out of his own head. Yeah. So, like I said, the I mean, like I've been saying, the bats definitely need to wake up. I mean, in today's game, they have to wake up. I'm hoping for a breakout game from Judge. Hopefully he gets a, he gets um, a few a few hits or he, hopefully he gets some hits. What's up, Nathan? How are you, bro? Hopefully you're doing well. But, um, yeah, I'm going to bring up the next person here. I got somebody else waiting back. If, you have, any... someone, if, if you have someone and I'll, uh, I can uh, leave out. I have other things and I can listen to the background. But that, thank you yeah. for, for having me for the most part. Yeah, thank, thanks for your take, man. And uh, we'll see you next we'll do time. do this again sometime. Absolutely. All right, see you later, man. All right, and I got somebody else waiting backstage. Uh, CT cards. Uh, all right, you ready to go, man? Cool, cool. Let's go. Let me bring you up stage. What's up, man? Hey, guys. Yeah, hey um, your comments in the in the comments. I'm like, all right, I like I like what he's saying. He's bringing yeah. Up. Well, I, I I hate the go trash on I hate the trash on the Yankees at times because I'm a huge fan, but it, I am scared of what happened last year happening again with you know with the offense, and then we're relying right now on the pitchers, you know good starts right now but how are we going to look around the all-star break and i want to ask you do you think we might pick somebody up pitching wise or or another bat uh around the all-star break you know do you who, who would you think we could pick up and who do you think we'd have to get give you know get rid of you know in that trade to get said pitcher or a uh, bat but help the team because i i really think we're missing a piece this year there, uh, I know when Cole comes back, that's going to be great, but that's going to be a slow progression getting him back to where we mm -hmm. need to get him. Mm -hmm. So I just, I was just curious. Those were my questions, basically. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. I mean, those are solid questions. You know, honestly, there was a, 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 a article that came out yesterday, and uh, Jason from One Sixty One brought it up too. That uh, the Yankees, there, there was an insider, an MLB insider. We don't know how how true these stories are, but mm -hmm. that they could go after or go pursue Logan Gilbert from the Seattle Mariners in a trade. Okay, uh, he could he could be a possibility. I don't know what they would have to give up for him. That's that's yeah. a good question, but I, I think he would be solid. Um, you know, I never complain about too much pitching. There's no such thing as too much pitching. But I can see the Yankees potentially going after a bat at uh, during the trade deadline. Uh, I, I don't think I don't think that would hurt. I don't think that would hurt. Um, that that could be a possibility. But knowing the Yankees, I could see them, you know, going after pitching before they go after a bat. And I wouldn't mind Logan Gilbert. I think he's actually pretty decent. Um, he's somebody that they could use in the in the in the rotation, uh, especially like right now. Even though the rotation's been well i think they've been pitching well but you know we'll you know again we'll we'll, we'll see what happens I, I cole's presence is being missed but the uh, the starting rotation right now they're able to hold their own i mean we saw nestor pitch an awesome game yesterday which you know that was that was needed unfortunately again the bats didn't wake up but i could i could honestly uh could i could a trade happen with their manners sure but is it going to happen we don't know they do need some bats the seattle manners do need some bats um, but I know they how much they value their starting pitching as well. Uh, they do uh, value their pitching. But I, I could see potentially the Yanks going after a bat, although they have bats right now, you know, that are that are waiting in the wings. So I think once they get some of these uh, players hurt, you know, yeah, back, you know, because some of these guys are hurt, unfortunately, you know, got it, these injuries, they're never ending, you know, uh, not just for the Yankees, just baseball in general. But um, well, I can, I, actually, now that you said that, what is your take on, you know, all some of the injuries going on with the uh, 
with the pitching, you know, this year across the league. <laughs> I'm just curious man. what you what Yeah, you yeah. You know what, man? I mean that that's a. I, I I I've been say I've said this a few times. I um I want to do a stream with some of the other content creators. I I kind of uh gave gave an idea out there to do a show on all these injuries to pitchers, especially because it, it's it is alarming. You know, it's it's very alarming. I yeah. don't like it. Um, you know, Major League Baseball wants to say that the pitch clock has nothing to do with it. I beg to differ. I I totally beg to differ. Look. It's playing a role, right? I'm not yeah. saying it's 100% the problem. It's playing a role. But these guys are definitely throwing a lot harder than they used to. Even prior to the pitch clock, these guys were still getting hurt. Uh, and they were requiring Tommy John surgery. It's starting to become it's starting to become more common. I, I don't like it one bit. I know it's a lot of these um, anal analytics that are saying, um, you know, to throw the ball harder. You know, I, I think that's what it is. But. Also, I, I don't know if players are built the way they used to be. I know people like to talk about like Nolan Ryan and Roger Clement, but those guys were workhorses. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes when it comes to those two guys, I mean, you, their workout regimen was on a different level. Uh, the way they took her, care of themselves, I, you know, I don't know that these players are doing the same thing. Um, but again, I don't I don't know uh, player players recovery, how they recover. You know, that all plays that that's all a factor. But it is it is concerning. With, with all these injuries, I am I am concerned, and it's it's not good for the game. It's not good for the sport. Um, it's bad for baseball. What's the? I, I don't know what the solution is, but it, it's just um, again. I think I think these pitchers need to go back to kind of like those uh, somewhat of those Andy Pettit days where you didn't have to ball, throw the ball hard, just place the ball where it needs to be placed. I mean, he was he was still getting strikeouts, right? But look yeah, what Nestor, look what Nestor did the other day. Nestor's yeah. fastest pitch was I think ninety five. And he only threw that once, and the rest of his pitches were between 89 and like you know 92, 93 miles per hour. It seemed like, and he was doing fine. You don't need to be chucking the ball the way some of these guys are, and it does scare me because when I watch, like when, I don't know if you guys remember with that. Well, of course, you guys remember, but that game where Michael King threw out his arm. He, yeah. I, oh man, I'll never forget watching that. When they showed that replay, it was like, oh, oh, oh you, you know. So they make I fear that with a lot of the pitching. You know, when I'm watching these guys get up there and they're throwing as hard as they can, it's like, oh, I don't trust. I don't trust the longevity of the product. You know, of that player. You know, if you want to call it that. So, but I'll, yeah. I'll let you guys go. I just wanted to, uh, those are all at my uh, quick little things. I'll let uh, somebody else go. But no, you're you're that. good. I mean, if you want to if you want to continue staying on, I'm probably going to wrap up here in the next couple of minutes anyway. But uh, I was going to say I I don't have anybody else waiting backstage, man. So um, you know we we can uh, I'll once I close it once I'm ready to end the stream, I'll drop you down and uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, um, and Ken here is saying uh, any player picked up at the deadline will cost prospects. Uh, most of that quality pitchers that were available have been injured. Yeah, the only yeah, place that for help. Yeah, probably be bullpen arms, but it, the Yankees also have a plethora, a plethora of bullpen arms too. And um, you know, I, that's one thing about uh, we were talking about with prospects is I know I know a lot of fans don't want to give up these prospects. Not all of them are going to make it on the Yankees team. Uh, some of these, some of these guys are going to make it, right? Uh, but. Uh, other guys, you know, don't keep them, right? Don't keep these guys if you're not going to play them. Uh, trade them while they still have some value. But um, you know, we'll, well, again, we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but you know, they're going to get some some of their players back. You know, they'll get Efros back, Trevino back. Their relief pitchers, uh, hopefully, DJ. You know, is you know he's hope hopefully he's making his way back. He should be playing on Tuesday. Hopefully, if the doctors give him the okay. Um, I just wanted to get a few comments here. Smoltz is on a podcast. He believes that it's a combination of high spin and high velocity pitching. Look it up. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely, Brad. Should be more important than pitching hard. Yeah, Jonathan, I agree with that. Uh, me personally, I believe it's a combination of no sticky, sticky stuff, changing the balls. What's, yeah, I mean, they don't have that sticky stuff no more. So, um, yeah, it's definitely putting a lot more stress on their, on their arm and their shoulder, elbow. Uh, but even with that sticky stuff, I mean, guys were still getting hurt somewhat. So, but it's more, it's worse now. It's definitely worse now. I would love to see Clayton Beater. I want to see Clayton Beater. I, I really want to see Clayton Beater. But I think they're right now at the, I think they sent them back down because they were thin with pitching. So, um, 
you know, I think he's getting some starts down there, but I, I would love to see Clayton Beater. I, I like I like what I saw from him in spring training. Yeah. And uh, he was right, and he's right now. Right now. Yeah, I got I got you there, D-Rod. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then Ken, and, you know, for those of you that don't know, Ken is a uh, – he he's been he he knows a lot about the game, uh. So and he was a he was a pitcher himself, so he definitely brings in a lot of knowledge. So he's saying uh, pitcher injuries or systemic problem going back to little league. The pitch clock has little to do with it. Uh, yeah, I. So again, you know, I don't I don't think the pitch clock is. I'm not saying it's the whole problem. I just think it it plays a small role, but it, it it's just I you know I just feel like ever since they implemented it, the injuries have gone up, but. I say it is more of the 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 these guys just throwing a lot harder uh, than they used to. So um, you don't think that has something to do though with also how these kids are being brought up? You know, yeah. in their early years, they're being told basically to throw as hard as they can, and by the time they get to the majors, they're going to need Tommy John UCL surgery. That's why you're seeing so many t- Tommy John. Sur- I can't believe how many. You know, I mean, you go back you know, 20 years ago, that wasn't as common as it is now. It seems like, I don't know if players are the conditioning they're doing is actually maybe not working. You know, maybe it's all this extra conditioning is actually kind of screwing you over to a point. Sorry to say that. Um, no, but no, I, I'm just curious because I just don't remember seeing this many injuries uh, in the past. And it's, it's kind of weird what's going on, you know, and, the, and some of these guys, you know, now and uh, go back 20 years, you had guys still doing seven, eight, the pitching a whole game, you know, um, now, you know, five innings out of your starters, what kind of is expected now. So, but you're still having these injuries and actually more of the injuries. So I'm just curious if this goes back to just the way they these kids are coming up through the system, you know, from say middle school, high school, you know, just, you uh, we, we need to change how the kids are brought up for their, their arm's sake. I believe that, that kind of could be a reason what's going on, why you're having these younger guys get injured so easily. Oh, <clears throat> A hundred percent. I, you know, Ken, Ken even talked about it, you know, uh, he brought up how in the little leagues and then high school, you know, they're, you know, high school kids, I don't think they should, I don't think they have any business throwing the ball hard. I mean, they're, they're so young. And if they're, if they start experiencing issues at a college level, that's not good. You know, it's not, it's not good at all because by, by the time they get to the majors, they're, they're already, you know, I don't want to say that they're injury prone, but they're at a higher risk of injury. Right. And, and, you know, we're seeing, we saw that with, uh, you know, with, with uh, Yuri Perez, who's a starting pitcher for the, uh, for the Marlins, 21 years old, and he's out for the season, you know, it, and he's a, he's a damn good pitcher, right? He's, he's very good, but he's, he's out. He's 21. He's 21. Like how, you know, we'll see, I think he'll come back in good shape, but the question is, is he going to be, how is it going to affect him long-term? You know, yeah. but maybe, him being young, it might it might not be as bad. So maybe it's better that he gets it now rather than later. But uh, but yeah, some of these kids in high school though, you know, they're they're already throwing the ball hard because their 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 coaches are telling them to throw the That's ball hard. And I, I I I just I don't I don't like it. You got to let these kids develop at at a young age and let them let them grow into it. You know, they're gonna they're gonna mature. Uh, they will, but. And they'll they'll expand, but yeah, it's just it, it's these injuries are starting earlier and earlier. It seems like um, I don't like it, but you know it. You know if you're if you're doing that, it's 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 kind of similar to like you know football players and the and the the CTE, right? That that's this it, it's kind of that same same uh, problem, right? That the that baseball players are experiencing right now. Except it's now it's just you know Tommy John surgery or UCL or shoulder issues it's 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 a constant problem um and d-rod is saying strength in numbers all the pitchers have to say they're not doing this anymore yeah um i i think players also need to speak up you know i think they absolutely have to speak up because you know it's their careers it's their health that's on the line you know and uh you know you got to keep these guys healthy you know um money's great i mean yeah they're getting paid their millions but uh you know it's great, but you know long long term though, you have to think about the long term. You want to get as you want to play as many years as possible. And Ken is saying, Ken just said? What's read, that? You, sorry, read what Ken just said. Sorry, I read that. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, he's saying within the last two years there are 35 All Star pitchers that have had. Yeah, exactly. Uh, smooth the other two seconds. That was excellent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
it's insane with the amount of pitchers. I mean, you know, also I mentioned Yuri Perez. I, uh, there's also uh, Shane Bieber, who's out. Spencer Strider from the Braves as of recent. He's another one. So it, it's it, you know, it's not and it's not just Yuri Perez from the Marlins. It's it's like the whole rotation. It's like they have their their starting rotations is, is like barely there. There's they're thin. Um, and then Brad is saying. I agree. You didn't have as many Tommy John surgeries, but then again, the spin rate wasn't as high either. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Brad. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, you and Ken are kind of saying the same things, man. So uh, you're, you're, you're absolutely on the money with this. Uh, but yeah, that was something I wanted to do, man, was uh, I wanted to uh, set up a time and day with some of the other content creators and talk about these injuries to pitchers and why it, why it's happening at a, at such a um, alarming rate. Uh, because I, I feel like a show like that, that that could, you know, we could talk about that for like one or one or two hours. Um, oh, and that and that that's something that's something worthwhile. I, I would I would love to um, I would love to talk about that. And, you know, hopefully it doesn't ruin the game. Um, that's that's what I'm afraid of. It's just, you know, it's again, it's bad for business. But, you know, we'll 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 see what the what the future brings. But um so you've been. Let me ask you something. You've been a Yankees fan a long time. Oh yeah, yeah I'm, I'm 40 years old. Been watching my mom's favorite team's the Yankees. So I grew up. I live in Connecticut, but I'm like, you know, I'm not far from New York City. So for sure, yeah. I figured by your name, I was like, okay, he's probably from Connecticut or lives in Connecticut. That's cool, man. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not too far behind you as far as age goes. So <laughs> um, I'm only like a couple years behind you. Uh, but yeah, I you know I grew up a Yankees fan too. Uh, you know, just cause my, you know, my brothers were big, were big fans. So I just kind of followed and, you know, I've been a fan since hopefully, you know, hopefully we see something this year from these guys, um, as far as world series goes, we'll, we'll see. It's still early in the season, still early in the season. So my, my dream of the playoffs is I literally, even if we don't win the series is just to simply see judge do something in the playoffs, like really come through, which I know he can, but he, that last he hasn't done much in the playoffs let's put it that way and i'm waiting i know he can and that's when i'm gonna know this team is on to something is when yeah. if he's gonna light up the rest of the offense along with soto you know if everyone else can get going and but that, that man in the uh playoffs that was just so bad against the astros i couldn't believe how bad we were i didn't expect that i you know when we had won all those games but i knew we had issues with the second part of that season though i knew that was going to be trouble but i yeah. still done a little better than we did <laughs> yeah the second part of that season was pretty lame i mean i don't, I don't know what happened the player the the team just all of a sudden they just like totally collapsed <laughs> and you know it was just a complete crap show um, yeah, that, I mean, the Astros that year, I mean, they, they were good. I mean, there, there's no denying it. They were good right now. They're, they're eating crap right now. Um, <laughs> they have, they have a lot of issues on that team. And, yeah. um, and you know, to Ken's point here, good pitching will beat good hitting hundred percent, hundred percent. I, I, I agree. Um, good pitching will always be good. Uh, will always be good hitting. And, you know, like I said, with the Yankees rotation, I, I, I like this rotation, um, if, if they can continue pitching well, like Stroman, I, I, I don't, I don't know. It, it's a debate as far as like, well, let me ask you this. Who do you think was the, is the best starter so far? Like who has impressed you the most? If you had a pick, uh, Stroman, Stroman? I have okay. the most faith in him. And then after seeing Nestor yesterday, I'm like, okay, I think he's got it going. Mm -hmm. I think he's got it going. I know it's, it's a, a, you know, for me, it's a toss up between Stroman and Schmidt. Mm, Schmidt shocked me this year. Yeah. yeah. Schmidt. I had a lot of so as far as the rotation goes, I had a lot of confidence in Schmidt. I, I really thought that he was gonna play well. Strowman, I know some fans were like, ah, I don't know about Strowman. I'm like, no, you know what? Give Strowman a chance. Watch, watch him. He wanted to come play for the Yankees and he took a discount, right? Because he opted out with the Cubs. He could have gotten paid 21 million, but he, you know, he took a cheaper deal to sign. He wants with the Yankees. to be out there too. He, and wants, he wants to, to be out. out there. That's the most important thing, right? Um, Rodone was the big he wasn't a question mark for me. Actually, I actually thought he was going to bounce back. I think he's been fine. He just needs to get that pitch countdown. Yeah. I think he's been fine. Uh, but Nestor was the big question mark for me. Uh, he was yeah. the big question mark. And he still is to some extent. I loved, I, you know, yesterday's start. I was like, hey, great. Like, you looked amazing out there. Um, I, I want him to 
have more games like that. You know, these guys need to pitch like five or six innings to have a, a solid start, solid outing. Um, but, you know, uh, yeah. And, you know, to Ken's point here, Stroman and Cortez have the least run support. Yeah, true. Oh, my God. I was going to say that. I was going to oh, say man. that. I know. I'm like, guys, can we just get some run support for them? Because they're pitching a great – these guys are pitching great. They're pitching well, right? Especially Stroman, man. Stroman's been uh, – <laughs> I love I love his energy. I love I do love his energy. Uh, the, the the team has a different type of energy with him on the team. For Dugo, Juan Soto, you just could tell they get they get so fired up and they're there to support each other as much as possible. But um, as far as today's game goes, man, uh, how do you think uh, Luis Hill is going to do? I'll know after the third inning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's basically the way I'm looking at it because I can see him boom having a good first inning and then you know oh second inning comes up and that's where you're gonna see either he has the control or he doesn't. You mm -hmm. know, I, I can see him being a great pitcher, but right now when he doesn't have control of that ball and he can't get it in the zone, he only had one pitch really the other night that was doing anything, and even that was getting hit, you know. But he wasn't far off. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm not bashing him or anything. I, I yeah, just, yeah. I'd like to see him come back from that and at least give us four and two thirds. You know, I'd be happy with that actually right now, because just some of the stuff I've been seeing across baseball with some of the starting pitching, it's like, if you get four and two thirds, five innings right now, you are very lucky because some of these guys are I mean, within the second inning, just getting ha hammered. So, yeah. Which is actually sad that it's like four and two third innings or five innings is like, okay, you're, you you did well. It's like, ah, oh, <laughs> God, we got to go to the bullpen so early and, that's something like I want the Yankees to try and avoid is uh, going to the bullpen early. I love the bullpen. I do love the bullpen. They have a great bullpen, but I don't want these guys getting burnt out by um, by the time the second half of the season comes, because it, it's just like a after a while, it's just like these guys these guys are tired and worn out, and you, you see it on their faces. I mean, you, you can you can tell, but. Um, just like you don't like paying taxes, I don't like paying taxes. We don't need to be taxing the bullpen too much. <laughs> oh Sorry. man, let's not talk about taxes. <laughs> I, I don't think any of us like paying taxes, right, Chad? Like, I know you don't like paying. I don't like paying taxes. Uh, you know, but you know, uh, the other thing too that I wanted to bring up because actually Dev Finch kind of brought it up, calling up other pitchers. So you know, they have another option in their in their minor league system. So you know, they after may 15th um you know because they'll will will warren he'll have like an extra year of service time he could be, he could potentially be called up you know if, if if worse comes to worse and i would love to see will warren come up i think he could be a solid you know he he could be a solid number three or number four guy uh he's got some good stuff he pitched well during spring training um, even though uh hill got the winning job but which he rightfully deserved because hill did pitch better but I would love to see Will Warren come up at some point. I think he will, uh, or you know, at least that's what Matt Blake said. Matt Blake said that he'll he that he will come up, and um, you know, we'll see what happens. But um, I'm gonna close it out here in the next few minutes, you guys. Um, but I appreciate you all coming on. I wanted to ask you too because of your your name. Do you collect cards? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> a lot of cards. cards? Oh, yeah, I collect basically fi mainly fifties and sixties. Uh, Whoa. Cards. Give me a second. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, let's check it out. I finally got one of the cards I've been wanting to get. Oh, Tamaris. Whoa. All right. That's the Dude, card I've wait. wanted for years. I finally got it the other day. <laughs> wow. Okay. Where do you like out of curiosity, where do you where do you get them from? Um, actually, there's a Facebook group I've been on, which are a bunch of actual trustworthy people. It's shocking. I know. Uh, on Facebook. <laughs> Wait, there's you could trust people on the internet? Yeah, I, I'm blown away because everyone knows like everyone who's cool, like know each other. They watch out if somebody's on there trying to take advantage of somebody else. It's instantly jumped on. And that's cool. That's cool. Uh, like, yeah. it, it, it's cool. Cool thing, because, uh, you know, especially in today's day and age, it's hard, getting harder and harder to trust something like that or just everything in general at times. So it seems. <laughs> yeah, man. OK, that that's cool. So you're are you like 50s and 60s? Is it because you're kind of into those types of players more or you? Yes. I, Roger Maris is my favorite player. I love watching Roger Maris. Like I, I think like that's one thing that a lot of people didn't know. I, I'm glad they showed it on the bottom of the TV screen the other night was uh, his first game 
uh, in a Yankee uniform and went three for four, had two home runs and four RBIs. That's not a bad way to start off your Yankee career. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. Roger Maris was a, he was one heck of a player. You know, we have one guy, we have a, a, a fan who subscribed to myself and uh, Jason from 161. He's a big, uh, he's a big Mickey Mantle fan. So uh, I'm sure, I, I don't know if you have any Mickey Mantle cards. Oh yeah, I, I have some. I'd have to dig some of them up because there's yeah, yeah. No, you don't. You don't. For I keep a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, no, you don't have to dig it up right now, man. But that's cool, though, man. I, 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 I do. Uh, I, I, I could appreciate people who you know collect these cards and uh, appreciate the legends, um, that played the game, you know. And you know, Dev Finch is saying that uh, you know, his his dad's favorite uh, was Yankee was uh, Mickey Mantle. That's awesome. Um, and Ken was saying, yeah, Warren has quality pitches. However, he was in a lot of jams. Yeah, yeah. He, he did put himself in a lot of jams. I agree with that. Um, you saw Mano play in real life? Dude, God. what a time. <laughs> <laughs> um, who, like, in this, in, in this current Yankees climate, you know, we could go back to, like, the 90s or – or the early 2000s, who who was your who was your favorite Yankee? I know you said you like Maris, but was there any other players that you appreciated or you like? Oh yeah, yeah, Bernie Williams. I love my Roger. man, my man. All right, Bernie is like my favorite Yankee of all time. Yeah, uh, for, like, for, for, I, well, I like Maris for, for that era. You know, that's the thing. I sure, can't sure, say sure, I have sure, a favorite sure. player. I have a favorite player from each era. I'll put it that way. And Bernie would be my yeah. favorite player from that era. So. Yeah, I, you know, I, as far, yeah, as far, Maris was an excellent player. I did, I did like Mantle, um, but my, my, my favorite Yankee, because I loved watching him play for me was uh, Bernie Williams, number 51. Um, I hope my, my, uh, I don't want to say a dream, but I hope one day I can get him to jump on a live stream with me so I can, I can interview him and talk to him and get to know him a little bit. He he seems like a really cool dude. Yeah. I bet that I bet that's something that could possibly happen for sure. Because he did, he seems pretty down to earth. As long as you're, you know, talking about something he's interested in talking about, you know, he seems pretty cool to, you know, for something like that. I would imagine he seems that way at least. So just bug him about guitars because he's a great guitar player. <laughs> I, I yeah I gotta I'll probably ask him if he has like a big uh, a big old gu- uh, guitar collection. I yeah, think, seriously. I think, I think that would I think that would be pretty cool. Break but he ice, always you know? seems very relaxed and laid back. I mean, you saw that in his game too. He, yeah. he hardly ever got upset or angry. The guy was a super patient. He seemed like he always just seemed like a nice guy. Yeah. I and mean, Ken, you're not old. Stop. That. <laughs> All right. O'Neill played with intensity. Did I did Paul O'Neill? Oh, yeah. Paul. Talk about a guy who played with intensity. But um, yeah. During <laughs> the '90s, man. Uh, yeah. I, you know, obviously, I grew up with Bernie. Uh, if we're talking about 2000s, I mean, you know, obviously, obviously like I, I'm, I'll always be a big Derek, Derek Jeter fan. I mean, it's Derek Jeter. Uh, but as far as like the, the 2000s, um, I don't know. It's hard to say, you know, because a lot of a lot of those guys started retiring and, you know, th- you know, there wasn't really I, I maybe you could say Robinson Cano, but I'm not sure, you know, Um Watercolors beware. <laughs> well, who's your who's your current like currently on this current team roster? Who's your favorite p- player or players? Who's like your top two that you like to watch? Like pitching and uh, and uh, batting. Who are your favorite to watch batting and pit? And who's your favorite to watch? You know, pitching wise. Oh, I mean, pitching wise, right now, I mean Garrett Cole. I mean, you can't go wrong with Cole, right? Um, as far as the bats go, I mean. If we're talking about today, I love seeing Juan Soto. I mean, you know, the, his patience at the plate is it can't be matched. He's a generational player. He's an, he's just very he's an all around great player. The guy could hit, he could walk, he could hit home runs, he could do it all. He yeah. could do it all. I mean, prior to you know, prior to um, uh, Soto, I obviously Aaron Judge. You know, I I, I liked watching. I liked watching him. I'll, I still love watching him. You know. Uh, oh yeah, Matsui. Yeah, Hideki Matsui. Yeah, you hit the you hit the you hit the nail on that one there, Frank. I was definitely a big Hideki Matsui fan. Uh, yeah, he he did he did a lot of he did a lot of good things for um 
for for the Yankees. So yeah, the game, yeah, the game will start in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, so you're gonna watch the game? Oh yeah. I'm yeah. waiting. On the <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm I'm waiting too. But um cool, man. Um I'm glad you jumped on, dude. Thank you. It was nice. Thank it you. was nice to be, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I do I do open panels usually. Um, you know, today was an, uh, usually I don't do them on Sundays if I, ever, if I do go live on Sundays. Um, but I will go do an open panel on Thursdays. I go live at 10 o'clock Eastern standard time. So, you know, if you're able to come on, uh, you're always welcome, man. So oh, no, thank um, you. I appreciate so, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The open panel, any, anybody could jump on cool. Cool. and chat it up. So I, I do that on Thursdays and I go live on Tuesdays at, uh, you know, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard okay. Time. So, uh, okay. Yep, yep. So keep it East Coast time. But uh, CT Cards, thanks for jumping on, man. It was great chatting with you. Good meeting yeah. you. So you seem like a really cool dude, but we'll, we'll do this again, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Take it easy. Yes, sir. You take it easy. Have a good one. All right. Uh, folks, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for... Uh, tuning in i had a lot of fun thank you to jonathan for for coming up to the open panel as always uh, he loves the open panels and that and and that's great you know he, he has some solid takes ct cards again thank you so much for jumping on it was good to meet you uh you take care my friend and we'll we'll, we'll definitely do this again uh love that roger uh you know maris card yeah d rod he is a good dude uh yeah take care take care yeah absolutely jonathan thanks thanks for coming on uh, Ken, always, always appreciate your take, sir. Uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, smack that like button. If you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 600 subscribers. Uh, I'd love to get there as quickly as possible. And, um, you know, if you want to buy me a coffee, it would be greatly appreciated. Again, no pressure. Uh, so let's hope the Yankees win the rubber game. Let's hope they win the series before Oakland comes into town. And if any other news come out, I'll definitely let you know, and I'll see you all next time.